Welcome to the video demo series for Configure IT. Unleash the hassle-free way to build bug-free mobile apps in the quickest possible turnaround time. So in this video, I want to go ahead and teach you how to use the barcode scanner. So we're going to use this by scanning a UPC code on an existing product, and then it's going to use an API, specifically the Walmart API, and go and find out how much that uh, item costs at walmart.com. So the first thing we want to do is look at our API. Now I've gone ahead and configured our API using our external API. And if you're not sure how to do this, you can uh, watch our video on external APIs. So we have a, a UPC code. We'll go ahead and hit debug. And here's our output from the walmart.com API. So we have the item ID and all these different parameters. And we can come down and we see um, that the name is an American Girl. Grace stirs up success, one of my daughter's favorite movies. And we have the price, the MSRP, sell price, description, so forth and so on. So how do we get this into the front end? So let's go ahead and take a look at that. So the first thing we want to do is I've got a screen here called barcode and we want to go ahead and uh, go to our control list and type in bar and we'll pull over the barcode button. So the barcode button has pretty much the same configurations as a traditional button, but with a couple of extra custom properties that we'll take a look at in just a minute. So for this button, let's go ahead and configure the spacing. So we'll go ahead and uh, X position, we'll do it 10, Y position. We'll do it 40, the width will be 300, and the height will be 44. Now let's go ahead and change the title. So we'll come up to normal title, and we'll type in scan. And let's take a look at the advanced properties. And we're going to go ahead and save those. Now let's go ahead and take a look at some of those custom properties. So the first thing we want to take a look at are these right here, the barcode image ID and the barcode text ID. And what this allow you to do is you once you take an image or once you scan a barcode, you can assign that image that it took to a image view. And the text of the barcode, you can assign it to a text field. So let's go ahead and configure those. So the first thing we want to do is we'll go ahead and bring over a label. And we'll configure these. We'll uh, make it 10, the Y position at 100, and the width will be 300, and the height can be 21. Let's go ahead and change the label to label underscore uh, UPC. And now let's go ahead and bring over an image view. So we'll come over here and type in image, bring over the image view. Now let's go ahead and adjust our uh, layout property. So the X will do 10. The Y position will do 140, uh, the width will be 300, and the height will be, let's just call it 130. And the object ID will do image UPC. And let's take a look at the advanced properties. And we'll click save. Now the next thing we want to do is go ahead and display some of the information that we're going to get from our API right below the UPC image. And the way we're going to do that is we're just going to bring over a couple more labels. And the X position will do it 10 again. The Y position will do it 300, width 300, and the height is 21. And this one is going to be the label uh, name. So this is going to be the product name. And we'll bring over another label. And we'll adjust this at 10. 340 width will be 300 and this label will be um, price now we'll take a look at the advanced properties and we'll go ahead and adjust these and we need to go back and adjust these as well Okay, so now let's take another look at our uh, barcode button. So we'll come up to barcode button. Now we need to come down to barcode image and assign our image view. So that's going to be image UPC. And our barcode text ID will be 
label UPC. We'll click Save. So now we need to go ahead and load our data source. So we'll click on Add Data Source. And we'll scroll down to the bottom and get product info. And now we need to assign a value uh, for this UPC. And as you know, we're storing this in a form object. So we're going to click form object and select label UPC. Click save. And now we'll hit execute. So here's all the fields that are going to return and we'll click save. So now what we need to do is once this data source is loaded to go ahead and assign the values to our labels. So we'll click change object properties. We'll select our first one, which is the label name. Click save property. We're going to change the value and we're going to choose a response and we're going to choose name. Now we can just duplicate this and we'll change it from label name to label price and we'll choose response again and we can choose sell price click save so the next thing we need to do is go ahead and configure the scan button so that it will call the API so we'll click on the barcode scan button and we'll go to actions barcode success which means that it successfully scanned a barcode We'll click on Trigger API Call, and we'll select the Get Product Info. We'll click Save. And so now that we have all that configured, let's go ahead and take a look at it in the app. Okay, so I've downloaded the project. We'll hit the Scan button, and it brings up our window. And you see here, here's the My Daughter's Movie. So we'll scan that. It stored the UPC and the picture. Now it's doing the API Call. And there you go. There's the name of the movie and uh, the price. So we can scan another one of her movies. So we'll hit scan again and we'll scan this one. There you go. There's the second American Girl movie, Leah to the Rescue. Okay, so that's how you configure the barcode scanner. So now what I want to talk about is how to configure a navigation button for grid views and for animated photo galleries. And the way we're going to do this is we're going to go back and we're going to revisit uh, a project that we did a while ago uh, when we demonstrated our third party APIs where we actually pulled pictures from NASA's website of the Curiosity rover and we displayed those in a grid view. We're going to just going to modify that project a little bit um, and add some additional grid views, animated photo gallery, and how to control those with uh, navigation buttons. But first, what I want to do is revisit the API. So I have the API here. And if you want to know exactly how we configured this, then go back and take a look at our third party API uh, video and you'll see exactly how we did this. Let's take a look at the input parameters. So we're going to accept the Curiosity uh, rover name, um, Earth date, and the API key. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to check for any uh, existing pictures that um, have that rover name and the earth date because they might already exist in our database because we actually insert those in this one. So if the pictures already do already exist, we're just going to skip everything and we're going to just return the pictures. If they don't exist, this is where we call the external API. And we're just going to check to make sure that we actually got results. If we didn't, we're just going to return an error. And if we did, we're going to insert those pictures into our table. And then we're going to return those pictures um, back as the uh, output parameters of the API. So now we have the data source already loaded, Rover Photos. And we're going to go ahead and take a look again at those input parameters. And so you can see that the rover name we're getting from the text rover name uh, object and the earth date we're getting from the object label date. And then we have our API key. So we'll click save. So here's the text rover name. And then here uh, sitting below the date picker is the label date. And as you recall, the date receiver ID of the date picker is the label date. So when we choose a date from the date picker, it will actually put the value in the label date. We'll see that. So the first thing we want to do is come over to our control list and we'll type in photo and we'll drop that animated photo gallery right in. 
and now we can go ahead and resize it. So the Y position will be 170, let's say the width will be 200, and the height will be 200 as well. And we'll just come up here and go ahead and center that up. Now let's take a look at the advanced properties. And we're just going to go ahead and turn these off so that it stays at the top right in the center. We'll click Save. Now let's um, look at the cell. And we're just going to go ahead and have that right at the top. We'll take a look at the um, advanced properties. And so we'll go ahead and have it fill the view. Now uh, to this we want to go ahead and add a image view to the cell. So we'll click over, click on the image view and drag that over. We'll click on this full screen so it fills the view. And then we'll take a look at the advanced properties. And we'll just have that fill, save. Now we need to go ahead and assign the key name to data. So we're going to click on key name to data and we'll come down to image source. Now before we can test this we need to add an action to uh, the photo gallery so that when it's loaded it'll go ahead and fire the API. So we'll click on photo gallery, we'll go to action, load, and then we're going to trigger an API call. Select our API, Rover Photos, and click Save. So now what we need to do is on this Get Pictures button is that configure it so that when it's pressed it will go ahead and reload the photo gallery. So we'll click on Get Pictures. Click on Actions. Click. And we will change Object Properties. And then we'll select our photo gallery, click save, and then the property we want to reload the view. So what that'll do is that'll reload this view, and as you recall, when this view is reloaded, it'll automatically call the API. So now that we have it configured, let's go ahead and take a look at it in the app. So we've gone ahead and reloaded the app, and as you can see, we've got curiosity there and the date. We'll click select get pictures. Now it's reloaded the view and it's called the API and you can see we have our pictures and we can scroll through the photo gallery. Now there's a lot of different uh, settings uh, for what type of photo gallery um, and we'll take a look at those uh, right now. So if we click on photo gallery and we scroll down you can see the animation type. By default it's cover flow. As you can see there's quite a few animation types. So in this case we'll do rotary. Now it should repeat items in animation. We'll go ahead and check this and what this does is this allows the um, the pictures to repeat themselves. If you want to uh, select how much space is in between items you can set that figure here. So we'll just choose 5. Slideshow time interval. If you enable a slideshow then it will automatically scroll through the pictures. And this slideshow time interval is how long do you want uh, each picture shown for. Uh, enable paging. If you're doing paging, uh, for example, you have a lot of pictures, then you can enable paging right there. Okay, so why don't we go ahead and show you how to add navigation buttons. So the first thing we want to do is come over to our control list and we'll type in nav and we need this navigation indicator button. We want to drag that over. So the X position, we're just going to change to 220. Y position is 380 the width let's just say it's 70 and the height is 44 so now we want to come down and really the the first thing we want to do is this object parent ID we need to assign this object parent ID to the animated photo gallery and what that does is it says that this button belongs to the photo gallery so that when it's pressed it's going to affect that photo gallery now the next thing we want to do is navigation button forward and what this does is by default the buttons um, will navigate backwards but by choosing this navigation button forward it basically tells it hey go forward. All the rest of the configurations are basically the same thing as any other traditional button so if you want to add a uh, an image 
uh, for the button you can certainly do that for this one we're just going to just change the title and we're going to say next and then that's going to be our button so we'll change it to um, highlighted and we'll change it to next as well so now we need to add a second button to go backwards so we'll adjust it a little bit we'll move it over um, the width will be 70 and the object parent ID again we're going to uh, select the photo gallery click Save we're not going to check the navigation button forward because we actually want it to go backwards and then we'll just uh, scroll down and we'll change the normal title to back and we also need to do the same thing for highlighted all right so now let's take a look at it in the app there you go so now all we need to do is hit the next button as you can see it's scrolling through the pictures perfectly now if we click the back button you can see that the pictures are going backwards so that's how you add navigation buttons for an animated photo gallery now let's go ahead and add those navigation buttons to a grid view so what we want to do is go ahead and click on go to our object tree so we'll click on the photo gallery we'll type in hide and we'll go ahead and hide it so now we want to come over to our control list and we want a grid view and we're just going to drag that over and drop it. Now you notice it put our grid view inside the photo gallery cell so we just need to drag that out. And now our grid view is on top of our photo gallery. So as you can see it's already the same size as our photo gallery so we'll just go ahead and leave that the same. Now we need to configure the grid cell and we need to just go ahead and make that 200 by 200 do need to go back and take a look at the grid view and now we want to add the action so that when the it's loaded it'll go ahead and do that API call so we'll trigger an API call select rover photos click Save now we need to change the get pictures uh, from triggering the photo gallery we want it to trigger the grid view so we'll click on actions click and just change this uh, from the gallery to the grid view click save and save again now we want to change these uh, navigation buttons from working on the uh, the photo gallery now we want them on the grid view so we'll click on the first one and we're just going to change the object parent ID from the gallery to the grid view Now we need to do the same for this one. And so what this grid view will allow us to do is it'll allow us to just show one picture at a time. And click save. So now we want to go and we want to add another image view to the grid cell. So we're going to select that and drag that over. and we'll just go ahead and expand it to the full view and now we just need to add the key name to data which is going to be uh, image source and let's enable image detailing and we'll select the image source again and the description will be the camera name and in this one we want to go down and make sure that user interactions enabled now let's go ahead and take a look at it in the app all right, so I've gone ahead and uh, refreshed the app. So if we just click next. You can see that we're giving the pictures one by one. If we click back, we can go back and we can just scroll through them. Now, remember we enabled image detailing. So if we click on an image, it'll open it up in a larger screen. And if we just tap the image, we can see uh, the description. In this case, we set it to be the camera that the image was taken with. Now in this view we can also scroll through each one of them if we wanted to and we can tap so that's the mass camera so this is taking uh, pictures of the ground kinda cool so that's how you configure navigation buttons for grid views and animated photo galleries. Want to learn more? 
Visit our Help Center for additional tutorials, our Support Center, and our online community, where our support team will assist you. Keep configuring.